Let's open in prayer this morning, and I want to say Happy Easter to everyone that's here, everyone that's joined us, and let's uh, magnify yes. the Lord today. Thank you, in Jesus. Worship. Hallelujah. My Lord, I lift you up on yes. high, and I glorify you, the very best I know how today. Yes, Lord. For I'm thankful, dear Lord Jesus, that you are alive, and that you are amongst us here this morning, and I bring honor and praise unto you from my heart, and I magnify you with everything yes, that, I, that I can possibly muster today yes, Lord, in the precious Jesus, name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's alive. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Jesus has risen, and I'm thankful that he's alive Jesus. with us here today. God bless you. Brother Lenny's going to come and lead us in some singing. Let's magnify the Lord. When I survey If you want to play at home, I'm in the key of C. If you want to join in with instruments at home. When I survey the wondrous laws on which the
A stranger to me. sing that song again. He's my Lord and He's my God. And let's worship and magnify Him as we sing. Lord and my God He's not just a stranger Jesus wore was that veil between God and man. And when Thomas fell down, and Jesus said, put your hand in my side and touch my nail prints. He cried out, he's my Lord and he's my God. And today, let me say, he's my Lord and he's my God. And I pray that he's your Lord and your God Amen. also this morning. Well, happy Easter coming to you this morning from the studio here at KJNR 91.9 FM and also on uh, Facebook Live. It's just good to be with you. Oh, you don't know how I'd like to be together downstairs worshiping uh, in the church below, but uh, here we are. It's the best we can do today, but we want to give him everything we've got, and I'm encouraging you at home, as I've encouraged all along, set everything else aside during this next hour. Sit down as your family, worship the Lord, magnify along, the Lord along with us here today, just as if you were in the church service uh, downstairs itself if we were able to do that so we do have some prayer requests and what I wanted you to do is gather as I've encouraged you to talk among yourselves there in your homes and and uh, tell each other your needs your requests and then we're all going to pray together and uh, there is a, a sick elder that was requested I choose not to put names out but but uh, that that uh, uh, that is uh, one person called us asked us to pray for this person the Lord knows and but remember all of our elders and all who are ill at this time that the Lord touch them and heal them. Um, one of our family, uh, one of our members of our church here has a, his sister has uh, uh, the virus. Pray for her for a healing touch in her body. We've also lost a couple of pastors uh, as a result of this coronavirus. Pray for their families today and that the Lord would uphold them and encourage those families. A praise report, Scott Hess was from Scammon Bay, was found. 
and uh, they were searching for him. He's been found. Thank God for that. We also encourage you to share these things on, or share this service on Facebook Live, if you would. And if you are on KGNR Saving Data, if you could turn on just long enough to say share, and it will go out to more people who can, um, uh, who can watch the service. Uh, we here in Bethel in this region are limited on our data. Some people aren't used to that, but we are limited, so uh, we have to work with what we've got. Mm -hmm. The notes today are on the website K at uh, UPCI, uh, BethelUPC.org, and also on Facebook mm -hmm. page, the Bethel United Pentecostal Church Facebook page. So let's pray for these particular needs. It's given you time now to share with one another. And let's pray for these needs together. Lord, today I thank yes, you for Jesus, everyone. Lord, you are holy and I pray God. for our church today, You're dear so God. Great, God. I'm asking you, Lord, church, for Lord, every one of our planet, church Jesus, family God, members, dear God, that you're going to bless God, them in a special way today, Lord. Lord. Let something God, special God, happen in their lives Lord, today, Lord, dear Lord, God, for them to recognize the closeness of you, the nearness of you, the resurrection power of you. I'm asking this, Lord, now in the name of Jesus. And I pray now, dear Dear God, for yes, other needs Jesus, that have been made yes, known Lord to us God. here. I pray Bless for those, dear right God, that are ill Holy with the coronavirus. I pray, God, Lord, that you're going to touch God, them, Lord, and raise God, them up. We pray for the families that have lost loved ones, some to this disease. We pray, dear God, that you're going to strengthen them and encourage them, lift them up, dear God. And that we thank you, Lord, for others who have needs this morning in people's homes as they're gathered together. I ask now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will bless. Bless them as they pray together over every need. There's the some of those, Lord, that I recall from our church services. I pray for Naomi's request, dear Lord. I pray, dear God, that your will be done. For Joel's request, Lord, let your will be done, dear God. I pray, Lord, for each of those. Your hand upon them, Lord. And I thank you. I thank you for others that are watching at a distance, miles from here, dear Lord. I ask, bless them here this morning as we celebrate Easter today and as we magnify and glorify you today. In the wonderful yes, name of Lord. Jesus, I love you, Lord, yes, Jesus, with all my heart, yes, Lord. in Jesus' precious Amen. name. Very quickly, tonight Praise at 6 o'clock, Brother, Brother Lindley has Pentecostal Power Hour. Again, it's uh, projected uh, primarily for the, uh, for the, uh, the church in Queethlook, but also out to everyone possible. And uh, 7 o'clock Wednesday night, we'll be back here for service. And then Friday night, Brother Mac... Lincoln has been doing the youth services or youth teaching online. Some great teaching. And uh, I encourage you to take a look at that. And the last uh, three weeks he's been teaching, been doing a great job. So that's on his Facebook page, Mac Lincoln, but it's also shared over on the youth Facebook page and I believe in others as they get shared. So, so that's for tonight. Also others have asked about giving. I do thank you for your giving that's posted on the Facebook page and also on our website. Also, you're welcome to call me at 907-545-1945. And uh, with that, we want to go into or go to the Word of the Lord this morning. All right. And uh, this Easter morning, Easter is always a special uh, a day of resurrection, of, of uh, going back and remembering the resurrection. So I'm going to I'm going to teach a lesson, preach, whatever you want to call it this morning. And uh, my teaching is somewhere between preaching and teaching. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 7. And Paul, writing to the uh, Corinthian uh, church, he says, For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried. That he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. I put emphasis in some of these places. And that he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living at the time that Paul wrote this letter, though some have fallen asleep, some had died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, Paul says, he appeared to me, on the road to Damascus, he says, as one abnormally born. I've put a title on this message this morning, The Truth of the Power of the Resurrection 
with a subtitle, The Three Planks of the Platform. Mm. And uh, you'll see that as we go into this. The truth and the power of the resurrection. The three planks of the platform. The death, the burial, and the resurrection is the gospel, the good news. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. These are the first three planks in the apostles' platform. Uh -huh. All right. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For what I received, I passed to you as of first importance. Look at the emphasis he puts there. Of first importance. Number one, that Christ died for our sins. Amen. Oh. Christ died for your sins. Amen. All right. According to the scriptures. That's right. Number two, that he was buried. He was buried. Yes. Right. He was sealed behind a stone. That's right. Amen. Amen. And he was raised the third day according to the scriptures. Praise God. All three are true. But all three have been challenged by critics, both ancient and modern. Uh -huh. Some have suggested that he never really died. He only fainted. Yeah. Strange. The spirit inside. Crucifixion itself. Some have suggested, or others have proposed that his body was stolen from the sepulcher. Well, the Jews right. encouraged that message. They tried, uh -huh. they paid the soldiers to, to lie, to tell that, that they'd fallen right. asleep. Uh -huh. Others simply refused to believe that he arose from the dead. True. There are those that it wouldn't matter how many proofs you put forth, they would still mm. deny it. Okay. Right. But in Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, Luke is writing there, and he says, After his suffering, he presented to them and gave them many convincing, King James Version uses the word infallible, uh -huh. convincing proofs that he was alive. Amen. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and he spoke about the kingdom of God. He mingled with them. Amen. He mixed among them. Uh -huh. Paul said over 500 that together at one place we right. don't have them recorded in another place we don't know exactly where it was but paul stated that over 500 of them had seen him at one time amen so i'd like to begin with the disciples i'd like to take a look first at them and uh, it says in uh, chapter 15 i'm going to go back to this i've already read it uh in the text and i read it again but i'm a, uh or i guess i haven't read that again but i'll read it here and he appeared to cephas that's peter mm -hmm. And there's always emphasis on Peter, and I'll explain why here shortly. And then to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time. And Paul said, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. I want you to notice that Paul wrote that more than 500 disciples saw Jesus alive after sure, his resurrection. Right. Mm -hmm. And that most were still living at the time of the writing of that letter. Uh-huh. If this was not true, or if this was even questioned at that time, there would have been plenty of opportunity for other letters to have been written right. that would have contradicted it, and there were none written. Uh -huh. In fact, I'm going to show you later that even non-Christians, or at least one well-known non-Christian, non-believer, non-Jew, well, non-Jew at the time that he wrote Jewish heritage, wrote about the resurrection. Uh huh. But I, before I go there, I'd like to talk about what he said about, he talks about according to the scriptures and the absolute importance of grounding everything we believe in the word of God. Amen. Right. In 1 Corinthians 5 and 3, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. Uh huh. That number one, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, this is such an important point. What, whatever we teach needs to be grounded in the Word of God. That's right. right. This means that it was prophesied beforehand. They didn't have a New Testament 
at that point. Right, amen. So when he's talking about grounded in the scriptures, he's talking about prophecy. He's talking about Old Testament. Uh -huh. That was the Bible they had in their hand at this time. Right. And before I bring you back to the crucifixion, let me give you a couple of other examples of the early church grounding their teachings in the Old Testament scriptures. Okay. On, in that first sermon of the New Testament church, going to Acts chapter 2, when Peter was preaching or teaching that first message, that first lesson, that first sermon in the New Testament church, he grounded it in the scriptures. Amen. Yep. Acts chapter 2, 14 to 16. The, let me just bring you up to date here. This was the birthday of the church, the beginning, uh -huh. of, the beginning church. of the church. Jesus had told them to go to Jerusalem and wait Amen. until they received the Amen. promise of the Father. Uh -huh. He told them to go there and wait until they be endued with power, power. Right. from on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to, to you. you. Yep. And so they obeyed. They went back and they went to a place that's known as the upper room. Uh -huh. And something marvelous happened approximately somewhere between seven and eight days or so after, uh, after the uh, ascension, after Jesus ascended uh -huh. into heaven. Uh -huh. And the Spirit of God fell upon uh -huh. them that day. Right. And they received God's uh -huh. Spirit, the promise, Amen. the gift that they'd been promised that they've been waiting Praise for. God. They were filled with oh, the Spirit of God yeah, and yeah. they began to speak in oh, other tongues as the Spirit gave them, gave them utterance. Cool. As the Spirit formed the words upon oh. their tongues and they began to worship Him speaking in yes, languages yes, yes. they had never learned. Amen. Yeah. Well, there was a bit of a stir, if you can imagine, 120 folks or so gathered that just received the Spirit of right. God, worshiping, uh -huh. magnifying God, and others coming by stuck their head in, uh -huh. looked, and wanted to know what was going right. on Come there. On. Uh -huh. And some of them even accused him of being drunk. Right. And it says True. in Acts 2, 14 to 16, then Peter stood up with the 11. Uh -huh. The other apostles were all there with him, and uh, approximately 120 people, and raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, uh -huh. let me explain this to you. Okay. Listen carefully. And it's Come really on. good that we're important that we listen That's carefully right. today also. That's listen right. carefully to what I say. Amen. These people are not drunk as you suppose. Come on. Right. It's only nine in the morning. Uh -huh. No, this is what was spoken by the, the prophet, prophet Joel. Joel. Grounded in the scriptures, uh -huh. as the scriptures declared. And he goes back and he begins to quote that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit yes, upon amen. all flesh. flesh yep. Your old men shall dream dreams, young men shall see visions. Yes. Upon my handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit yes, upon amen. all flesh. He Praise grounds God. it in the scriptures. In Acts amen. chapter 8, Philip connected with an Ethiopian eunuch that was traveling across the desert. And that man had stopped, apparently, his chariot, and he was reading from the scriptures. Uh -huh. He was reading from Isaiah 52 and 53. And he didn't understand what he was reading. Right. The Lord orchestrated Come on. that connection. Come on. Right. He orchestrated Philip being there at the right, right time and, uh -huh. and this man being there at the right time. Right. Out in the middle of an empty desert. Uh -huh. Amen. And the eunuch asked Philip, it says in Acts 8, 30, uh, starting in verse 35, the eunuch asked him, he said, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Mm -hmm. Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture, and he told him the good news good about news. Jesus. Yeah, in right. other words, he grounded this experience of the resurrection, the resurrection power, and what this man could have uh -huh. in the Word of God. In fact, by the time he was done, this man looked over and there was an oasis. Right, and he said, right, here is right, much water. Right. What Come prevents on. me from getting baptized? Right, yes. Both of them went out into that right, pool of yes. water and they baptized him Baptize that me. day. Oh, he baptized him that day. Amen. According to the scriptures. Now, no doubt when Paul was writing over in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he was reflecting back on that very same scripture uh -huh. in Isaiah 52 and 53. Amen. And it tells us that 
this one that was coming, this one that was going to bear the sin, the one that was going to carry your sin and my sin, was beaten beyond recognition. Right. And in Isaiah 53, according to the scriptures, it said he was despised right. and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering uh -huh. and familiar with pain, uh -huh. like one from whom people hide their faces. Uh -huh. He was despised and we beheld him in low esteem. Right. We uh -huh. held him in low right. esteem. He, people turned their faces from him. Right. People right. shunned him. Right. People spit on him. Uh -huh. People turned away from him. Right. But it was for our benefit that right. he was so brutally beaten and killed. Going on to verses 4 through 6, reading from the King James Version. Uh -huh. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Right. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yep. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us That's all. That's right. Amen. Amen. And you know what? Jesus didn't even attempt to defend himself there that day in right. Pilate's hall. All right. Come on. When Pilate finally asked him if it was true that he was the Christ, he said, it is true. Amen. Wow. He didn't try to defend himself That's that right, he right. was not guilty of all the things that they that, right. uh, that they had accused him of. Uh -huh. And there's a reason that he did not. And it is because he was bearing the sins of all of us who were guilty of Come all on. of those things right. that could have been, been told of him there that day. Amen. In Isaiah 30, 53 and 7, back to the NIV, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his oh, mouth. Hallelujah. He was led like a lamb to the That's slaughter, right. yeah. and as a sheep before her, its shearers is silent, no, 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 so he no, no, did not no, no, open no, his no, mouth. No, no, no. Uh -huh. And I don't want to leave this section of talking about because of the scriptures or as described in the scriptures without giving you one final thought on this concept of the importance of knowing the scriptures and the importance of grounding everything uh -huh. we believe in the scriptures. Uh -huh. Because there is a verse over in the book of Zechariah that ties together his first coming and his second coming. All right, preach it. And it says in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, Oh, referring to the nation of Israel, to the people of Israel. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. Now, we don't stop there. Let's read on. They will look on me. Uh-huh. The one they have pierced, pierced and they will mourn for uh -huh. him as one mourns for an only uh -huh. child. Uh -huh. yeah. This was written at 518 B.C. Uh -huh. All right. He had not been crucified. Right. Wow. And yet it is written that there's a day coming. He's coming again. Oh, that's right. oh that's right. grounded in the that's scriptures. Right. Yeah. Well, I've given you scriptures. That's the best place to start. Right. right. But I do want to tell you that there were others that wrote around the time uh -huh. that, that uh, Jesus was crucified. And there was yeah. one well-known historian by the name of Titus Flavius Josephus. He was born with a Jewish name, Yosef, uh -huh. ben Na, uh, Natayahu, I thought I had it ahead of time, I tried to have it <laughs> pronounced properly, was a first century Romano-Jewish historian born in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Then, it was a, at that particular time, it was a part of Roman Judea, just as it was when, when uh, Jesus was here upon the earth physically. He was born to a father of priestly descent and a mother who claimed royal ancestry. Uh -huh. He initially fought against the Romans during the first Jewish-Roman War as head of the Jewish forces in Galilee. Okay. Until he surrendered in 67 um, AD to Roman forces led by Vespasian. Now this is before Vespasian withdrew to go back to Rome and, uh, and his son came back later and finished the job. But uh -huh. Vespasian decided to keep Josephus as a slave and presumably an interpreter. After Vespasian became emperor in 69, he granted Josephus his freedom. Okay. At which time Joseph assumed the uh, Josephus assumed the name or the emperor's family name Flavius 
Flavius Josephus and fully defected to the Roman side and was granted Roman citizenship. Now, he would be an unlikely person to look to concerning the resurrection. Right. right. However, here's what he read, what's, what's written in his history. Now there was about this time, he's writing the history of the Jews and up including through the time of Jesus. He said, now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, uh -huh. Uh -huh. a teacher of such men as received the truth and pleasure. He drew over to him both men, both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. Right. He was the Christ. Uh -huh. Amen. He refers to him, the Messiah. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of principal men amongst us, interesting, for years they claimed there was no Pilate, but in 1960 or 61, they found evidence of his name written there in Jerusalem. They found evidence of it, and now it's accepted that Pilate, just as the scriptures All declare, right. that Pilate was the, the governor there amongst yes. us. And he con and, uh, had condemned him to the cross, it says. Josephus is right. Those that loved him at the first did not forsake him. Well, actually they did, but then they went back to him. Uh -huh. And it uh, says, for he appeared to them, here's what Josephus writes, he appeared to them alive again the third day as the divine prophets, as the scripture Amen. had foretold these, and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him and the tribe of Christians so named from him are not extinct to this day. Mm. They were still going on. Right. Well, they're still going on 2,000 right. years Come later. On. And here we are in Bethel, That's Alaska, right. nearly as far west as you can get on the continent, and we're still worshiping this yeah, Jesus, yeah. and he's alive, and we magnify him here Whoa. today. And yeah. we have a lot of reason to worship That's the Lord today. Right. Yes. He is the basis of our Come hope. Come on. Again, 1 Corinthians 15, 14, and 17. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith, he says. Wow. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still living in your sin. Oh, I right. thank yeah. God he forgave me of all my sins. Oh, I'm thankful he forgave you of your sins yes. if you had them washed away. Amen. I'm thankful yes. for that today. Yes. But when Jesus was nailed to the cross, the hope that those early disciples had uh -huh. was shattered. Uh, shattered. That's right. Yep. But the day that he arose from the dead, Come on. Mm -hmm. their hope was revived. Amen. Praise God. As the, the ladies went to take spices to put upon his body, and they arrived there, they found that he was gone. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And an angel declared over in Mark 16, 6, don't be alarmed, he said, you're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. That's right, that's what they were looking for. That's right. He's risen, praise, praise God. God. Right. Amen. He's not here. Amen. Mm -hmm. See the place where they oh, had laid him? Are. Folded napkin, <laughs> shroud laying there. He wanted, Jesus wanted Peter to know he had reason to hope. That's right. Yeah. So the angel gave him some further instructions. But why Peter? Oh. Okay. He said, I tell you the truth. Jesus, Jesus answered. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what. He said, go and tell his disciples and Peter. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you'll find him just as he told you. All right. Mm -hmm. But go tell Peter. Amen. I asked the question, why? He wanted Peter to know that he had risen, that Amen. Peter himself had reason to hope. Can you imagine how Peter felt after denying the Lord? Yeah, come on. Amen. Matthew 26, Amen. 34. Peter says, I'll never deny you. Uh, and we feel that way today. That's too. right. I'll never deny you. Uh -huh. That's right. But Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Wow. Preach this it. very night before the rooster crows, you're going to disown me three times. Wow. Yep. True, true story. As adamant as Peter was, and he would, it would never happen to him. And we can be that way too. That's right. Never happened to me. That's right. Mm -hmm. He failed the Lord, as the Lord predicted. That's Lord. right. And the rooster uh, crowed. My, and the my, Lord, my. Peter was, see, Peter was falling away off. Peter yeah. didn't totally leave yeah. him. Some of the others, we don't know where they were. But Peter was watching him, feeling sick to his stomach for what he had done. And the Lord looked straight at Peter. And the conviction was even greater. 
And Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him before the rooster uh -oh. crows today. You will disown me three That's times. Right. Mm. And Peter went outside and wept wow. uh -huh. bitterly. Amen. But was there any hope for Peter? Was there any hope? He had denied the Lord, That's just right. as the Lord told him. Wow. But go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you'll see him, just as he told you. We have reason to hope today. That's right. It, regardless of what you've done, regardless of if you failed God in some way, there's reason to hope Come today. Come on, right. There's a joy that comes with the spiritually resurrected. Preach. Come on. When we get down to our death, when we come facing death. Paul wrote, he said, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Uh -huh. And if you're to follow through that, that holy poem of Isaiah 52 and 53, you're going to find him dividing the spoils on the grave, so to speak. Yeah. You're going to find the, him the victor instead of the victim. Uh, he is, he's there, and I can just, in a sense, in my I can imagine him standing upon the grave, dancing and saying, O oh death, where is your sting? Yep. O oh grave, on, where is your Amen. victory? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Uh -huh. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. There was the raising of Lazarus that prefigured what the Lord can do for each of us. Come on. Mm -hmm. The scripture says we were dead in our sins. Lazarus was physically dead. Right. But and he, was, he arose to, to life again. That's we, right. we were dead in our sins. And he can cause us to rise That's right. to yes, life. He can. Come on. We can go clear back to Job even when we find a cause right, of the yes. resurrection. I would like to talk to you this morning about the benefits of the resurrection. Uh huh. You're out there listening this morning. I trust today you're focused on what I'm seeing. Yeah, amen. There's benefits for you today of the resurrection. That's right. Some of them I've already is. touched on. All right. Number one, the saving of a sinner. Come on. Romans 5, 17, for by one man's offense, death reigned. Mm -hmm. We all were sinners. That's right, yes. When David wrote over in the book of Psalms, he said, from the moment of conception, I was a sinner. Uh-huh, that's right. I didn't come into this world as a sinless child. He says, I came into this world as a sinner. That's right. For by one man's offense, by Adam and Eve's offense, death reigned. It was impossible for man to to attempt to save himself. That's right. And right. you can be as secure today, really, through salvation, Amen. because of the resurrection. Amen. You can be as secure today as if you're already in heaven. That's right. Come on. I'm not talking about eternal security. I'm not talking about once saved, always saved. Right. But if Come you on. will be saved and you'll keep walking with the Lord, you'll keep serving him, you can be as secure today as if you're already That's right. in heaven. That's right. Right. Jesus can become your resurrection right. oh, and your life come on. this very day. Amen. Many that I'm talking to this morning, those that I know well of our congregation, I know many of your stories. I probably don't know all your stories, but I know many of your stories That's right. of where you were when Jesus found you, of what you were involved in when That's Jesus right. found you. Right, come on. Alcoholism, drug addiction, adultery, fornication, selling drugs, mm -hmm. bootlegging, all the different things that you were involved in prior to coming to the That's Lord. Right. Uh -huh. But Jesus revived Amen. or he resurrected yeah. you when you died of all that stuff right. and you repented of all of that stuff. He gave you a brand new Amen. life. Right. Amen. And then as we live, it's life abundantly. I get so thrilled or I'm thankful for when people send me a note I've had notes here over the last few days from some of the families that just thanking God for salvation, uh -huh. thanking God for their families, thanking God for what he's done in the lives of their children, uh -huh. thanking God for the privilege of being able to teach their children the word of God, Right. life abundantly. You've really not lived until you've lived with Jesus in your life. People look right. in all the wrong places. That's right. 
People look for compromises where they can get a little bit of soothing, but instead of truly surrendering their lives to the Lord. But Jesus said uh, in John 10 and 10, I have come that you may have life Amen. and have it Amen. to the full. You might know it better from the King James. Life more abundantly. Amen. Right. Then there's the fruit of the Spirit that you can have in your lives. And it says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's right. Joel. That's right. Come on. Peace. Come on. You can have peace when That's there's right. storm all That's around right. you. That's right. You can have love in your heart when there's hate being cast at That's you. That's right. Right. You can have joy and peace. Uh-huh. Patience. I like the old King James. It says long, long suffering. suffering. Really? Yep. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Uh -huh. Gentleness. And self-control. Oh, Amen. there's what I like. Against such things there's no law. Oh, right. we're hearing, we're getting all kinds of direct orders and laws that are coming here during this coronavirus time. We're being told what you can do and what you can't do. But let me tell you something concerning the fruit of the Spirit. There's no law against it. You, you, can, you can have all the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, uh -huh. faithfulness. You can demonstrate all of that you want. There's no law against it. Amen. Right? And then let me bring you down to one more thing I thought of is the restorer of lost years. Some of you that I mentioned, when you, before you came to the Lord, the lives that you lived were very, very broken. Right, right. Very broken. That's right. Many of you were in debt. Many of you were come on. bound, strapped financially because of your sinful lifestyle. But come on, come on. Jesus, through the resurrection, uh -huh. through salvation, Amen. is the restorer Amen. of wasted <laughs> That's years. That's right. Boom, right on. You know, we have to admit when we come to God, I used to, I used to run treatment groups, I used to run a substance abuse treatment group, and I used to tell the guys in there, you're not 40, you're 14. I wasn't trying to belittle them and berate uh -huh. them. Right. Because they were stuck. Stuck where you Arrested started. adolescence. Yep. They were yep. stuck in adolescence. Yep. That's but I right. told them, you can gain more than a year That's in a right. year. You can yeah, gain more on. in a year, in a, gain more than a year in a year. That's uh -huh. right. And... The scripture tells us you can regain more in a year than Amen. a year. Yes. And I've watched people here who had nothing when they came to God. But today they have their own homes. Today they have their own vehicles. Uh, today they have families. Uh -huh. All because of Amen. the resurrection power yeah. of Jesus Amen. Christ. And Joel prophesied about this. He said, I'll repay yeah. you for the years the locusts have eaten. Amen. The great locust Amen. and the young locust and the other locust and the locust swarm. My great Amen. army that I sent amongst you. You'll have plenty to eat That's until right. you're full. And you'll praise the name of the Lord That's your right. God who has worked wonders for you. Uh -huh. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, uh -huh. and that there is no other. Right. Never again. Amen. Well, my people be shamed. Never again Amen. do you have to live a shameful life. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus will restore to you the wasted, wasted years. years. In closing this morning, God. one question remains. Even if I believe in the resurrection, so what? Uh -huh. What does it do for me? How do I get it into my life? All right, come on. How can, I be, how can it become more than a history lesson? Right. More than a historical Jesus? On, or, or more than Bring a miracle of history? Or, or more than a defiance of the laws of nature? Which the Lord himself created those laws of nature and put them in place. That's right. But he defied it uh -huh. through the resurrection. How can it become more than a historical All right. event? Say it, Pastor. Amen. How can these three planks of Paul's platform, the death, the burial, the All resurrection, right. be applied to my life? Come, Come on. on. Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, I'm reading from the King James Version, If any man be in Christ, he's a That's new creature. Right. Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. But yet, if I'm outside of that, that doesn't help me any. How right. do I get into that? How do I apply the death, the burial, the resurrection of my life? Uh-huh. Well, let me see if I can help you with that. Let me see if I can explain that to you. On the first day of the New Testament church, someone posed that same question. All right, yep. What can I do to be saved? If you can imagine that day when Peter preached to them, 
and he teaches to them when they, they had accused him of being drunk and he says uh, this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel he used that as a text and he began to preach and uh, or Peter began to preach that day I should say and as Peter preached you've got people there that probably said crucify him yeah you've got people For there sure. that probably said nail him to the cross sure that's yeah. right and they're wondering, is there any hope? Once they came to the realization this was the Christ, they're wondering, is there even any hope for us? And they, and, uh, and they asked him, what shall we do? What shall we do? How can this apply death, burial, and resurrection to my life? Come on. And in verse 38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness, forgiveness of your sins, of sins, and you will yeah. receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Boom, there it is. Now that's concise and... That's a point, but let me ask you this. Repentance, how do I get into it? Well, repentance is death. How do right. I get Jesus' death applied to my life? Amen. Come on. I've got to die some way. Oh, yes, I'll die eventually, but that won't help me any because I'm not facing right. eternal death. That's right. But I need to die somewhere, somehow, in this life. I need to oh, die man. to those That's sins. Right. I need to die to that old life. Yeah. And the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 7 and 10, Godly sorrow oh. brings repentance. Oh. Hallelujah. The first thing he told them to do, oh. if they wanted the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ in their life, they had to repent oh. of their oh. sins. Oh. Godly oh. sorrow right. brings repentance. The night I repented of my sins, I wept before oh, God. I ran right. to an altar. I wept before God. And that leads to salvation. That is not salvation in itself. That leads to salvation, and it leaves no regret. You identify with his death by repenting of your sin. Amen. Yeah. You're buried with Christ that's when you're right. baptized into him, that's into right. his name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's who died for you. That's right. Let me give you scripture for that. Romans chapter 6, 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Paul says, shall we continue in sin? No. That grace may abound? No. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Right. That's right. Know ye not, or don't you know that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death therefore death, yeah. we are buried with Very him much by much baptism death. into death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father uh -huh. even so we also should yes. walk Amen. in newness Amen. In of newness. life yes. yep. hallelujah Praise God. buried with him Come on. and then we're able to rise to walk That's in newness right. of life but how we need the resurrection Amen. power Amen. And it is more than just, no just rising out of that baptistry. All right. Something else has to happen. That's right. When you receive the Holy Ghost. Come on. When you receive the Spirit of God. Amen. Into your life. And every time in the New Testament, you can look it up, Acts 2, Come Acts on. 10, Acts 19. They always spoke in another tongue, a language they had not That's heard. That's right. And when you receive the Holy Ghost. The spirit that was in Christ that resurrected him come on. will come into you right, and right. you will receive your resurrection Hallelujah. power. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, come on. he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies That's right. because of his spirit who lives in you. The three planks of the platform that Paul presented, the death the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, if we were in the church below, we'd probably have an altar call. We don't have that luxury here today. I have prepared some assignment for you to do. All right. And I'm going to share them with you here. They're, they're on, uh, I believe they're on Facebook Live, and, or on Facebook, I should say, the United Bethel United Pentecostal Church Facebook page, and also on the website, BethelAKUPC.org. Take a few minutes among yourselves before you get up and run to get something to eat or, or do anything else. Take a few minutes and talk about the resurrection that the Lord has given to you and your family. Amen. If you've already received it in Amen. your life. Talk about it. Talk about how your life is different today because of the resurrection. Talk about how your life has changed. Share with your children how Jesus changed your life. That testimony. Praise God. Yeah. Review how you can apply. Talk about what I just did, that last part, the death, the burial, the resurrection. Review how you can apply that and how other people can apply Amen. that to their lives. Amen. And number three, 
If someone in your household is old enough to understand the infilling of the Spirit of God, pray right now that that person will be filled Amen. with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now here's the other thing. Remember, receiving the Holy Ghost is not something you do. It's what He does. He does. That's right. Focus on Jesus that's right. when you seek yeah, to be filled right. with the Holy Ghost. It's not, some, it's not anything someone around you can do that's for you. Right. You yes. seek to be filled with with Amen. the Spirit of God. But we can build a ring of faith around those who are seeking to be filled. God Amen. bless you. We're going to have a close with another song. And let's worship and magnify the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. He was wounded for us. Resurrection Day in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Service is six tonight. Praise God.